Welcome back everyone, let's go ahead and talk about none other than the Samsung Galaxy A50 and see how this phone holds up in 2021. Now first of all, if you want to pick up this phone and some other phones I'd recommend this year, links will be down in the description, you can get it from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now we should be getting the A52 coming out very soon, So, and I've already covered the A51, I love that phone a lot, and if you aren't familiar, the Samsung Galaxy A series of devices are pretty much just, you know, their budget tier models. Now they do do strip out a couple of things for sure here and there, but I think for a package and for a phone that you can literally just go to Walmart or Best Buy to pick up for a relatively cheap price, I actually think they're pretty decent values. But I will tell you, getting like a used Samsung phone of that year is also an extremely good value, probably better value per dollar. So, you know, for the A50, for example, the Galaxy S10 came out that same year. Much better device, you know, it was way more expensive, but now it's depreciated quite a bit. You can probably pick it up for like around $300, probably even less than that. So again, choice is yours. You know, links will be down below, like I stated, but the front of the Galaxy A50 has that 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display, and it's a 1080p panel. And I think for sure, you know, it's it's a great panel for the price that you're paying at that time and it's a really decent looking panel there's not too much bezel on it for a budget phone a, you know a little tiny sliver of a bezel on the bottom you have the infinity u display whatever they call it and the front facing camera now i think for sure it's a really good looking you know front display it does seem like it's i don't know a little bit more plasticky on the front of course you know it's a glass screen but i don't know it just seems like it's not as premium looking as something like a galaxy s10 at that time but still a pretty good panel for the price tag you have the charging port on the bottom of this thing and on the back you have this kind of plastic glass back you know it's a plastic back but it definitely doesn't feel as plasticky as something like a samsung galaxy s21 in my opinion with the frosted plastic back but this one I think doesn't really feel that bad and for the price tag and you're probably going to be putting a case in it too so it's really not a crazy big deal but I definitely do think it doesn't really look that bad. You have a micro SD card slot on this thing and you do have this kind of triple camera setup and I say kind of and I'll get into that in a second but I think for the body of this phone and the feeling in the hand it really isn't that bad of a feeling or performing phone when it comes down to just the looks and visual aspect. I think when you get a phone like this especially for the price tag you may be expecting it not to perform that well or not to be that good of a phone and those things are true but it's only true if you're comparing it to the best phones of that time if i were to compare you know a nexus 6 to the you know pixel 5 right now of course the pixel 5 is gonna blow the nexus 6 out of the water every single time but at that time the nexus 6 it was like the flagship of that year and this is kind of the same realm as long as you're not comparing you know this phone to like some crazy outlier i think you're gonna be okay so for sure the body of this phone, the feeling of this phone and everything, it gets a thumbs up for me in my books, dude. Now hitting on the cameras, this was the one area where I was probably the most disappointed in. So first of all, 25 megapixel wide angle lens, 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor, then a 5 megapixel depth sensor. And throughout the Samsung Galaxy A series, I've owned a ton of them. And I'm not too sure, Samsung, they make really good cameras, but they always put the watered down versions on these devices. And I feel like in the next couple of years, they're probably going to start shifting it around a little bit. But with this device, I'm glad it has an ultra wide sensor and I'm glad it has a depth sensor. The depth sensor is not extremely useful to be completely honest for a lot of people, but you can only do 1080p videos at 30 frames per second no 1080p at 60 no 4k videos and i think that's probably you know a deal breaker for a lot of people you can probably get by with the visual way this phone looks and the way it looks on the back and having multiple camera setups but i will tell you not having you know a good camera on the back or on the front for that matter isn't really going to give you that good of an experience and i talked about this last year or the year i made this video and even you know this year uh, again and this camera in terms of like the way it looks it looks okay but the video aspect is one of those things I just can't get over and it probably is a deal breaker for a lot of people. The front facing camera is a 25 megapixel camera, 1080p at 30. And I think also, again, you know, if you don't really use your cameras that much, then I think it's okay. But as I mentioned before, it could be a deal breaker for some people. If you're just doing like Google Hangouts and stuff like that, I think you'll probably be fine but I, I think you know if you want a better camera i would highly recommend going up to something like the galaxy s10 or one of those type of phones you're probably going to be getting a much better experience from those devices than you know this device for sure so in terms of that that pretty much covers up you know the camera aspect of the galaxy 50 in 2021 now hitting on probably i'll say one of the weirder aspects of this phone and one of the best aspects of this phone simultaneously so first of all this thing does have android pie on it it did get upgradable to android 10 
and I'm, I'm unsure if it got One UI 3, and I think that's one of the bigger problems with this type of device. I think it's probably going to be getting it, as far as I can tell from some articles that I've read, and I think that's, like I mentioned before, one of the bigger issues with this type of device. It's already pretty much outdated. It got One UI 2.5, which I'm happy with, or apparently the A50 did actually get One UI 3, but my specific model just didn't get it, and I think that's great. You know, I think that's awesome, but but One UI 3 is already going to be outdated pretty soon, and unfortunately this device, you know, isn't going to be lasting much longer beyond that. And as I mentioned before, that's kind of sad. I think for devices that support things like, you know, longer software support is great, but on top of that, I'm unsure of the rooting and custom ROM capability behind this device too. So it's kind of another area where this phone could have been improved in, but Samsung is never going to unlock the bootloaders ever again, so we're pretty much screwed and we're pretty much boxed in in terms of a that standpoint. But I think at the end of the day, as I always mention and I always state, this device is okay right now in terms of software, but very soon it could be outdated. So that's a pretty big thing to keep in mind. But I will tell you on the flip side, one of the best things about this phone, believe it or not, is the battery. This device has a 4,000 mAh battery inside of it, and that is a massive size battery for sure. Having that big of a battery on this type of phone is going to be giving you a beautiful experience. You're going to be getting long lasting, I mean this phone can last you all day and then some. And as I mentioned before, that is a pretty big asset for it. Now on top of that, one little tiny thing that I have to mention is that there's no reverse wireless charging, which is okay, but there's no wireless charging either. And that is a pretty big deal. When you have a phone like this, you want it to last as long as possible, you want it to be as future proof as possible, and this device unfortunately does not have any reverse or wireless charging. Kind of annoying I know, but again, you do get better battery life and a big battery at that, so I think that's a pretty big thing too. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up there. Now, now ending it off with the performance, this device has that Exynos 9610 chipset with 4 gigabytes of RAM on the base models and then 6 gigs of RAM on the top tier models. And as I mentioned before, this device by having that type of you know RAM setup is I think pretty good. You know I think it's a pretty good amount of RAM for to have on this type of you know budget tier device. And I think one of the bigger differences, as I mentioned before, is that chipset. For some reason, the experience I've had on this type of device really wasn't that smooth, even for the price tag. I think a device like the Pixel 2 or the original Pixel will give you a much better, smoother experience, in my opinion, than this device. And those devices came out years before this one. So kind of like an interesting little conundrum we have there. On top of that, if you're planning on doing any super intensive type of you know task on your type of Galaxy A50, especially now in 2021, you may run into some problems. And the main problem isn't even the RAM management portion which typically is the main problem for a lot of older phones. This one is just the speed of, you know, which apps open and in terms of even like, you know, gameplay and all that kind of stuff. If you're planning on doing a bunch of super intensive games or anything like that, or super intensive video editing, you're going to experience some problems. And I think that's going to be the bigger problem than even the RAM management. If you get the base model of this device, you're expecting to have some sort of glitchiness and some sort of, you know, RAMs crashing in the background and stuff. That's going to be the bigger problem for a lot of people in terms of RAM management portion. But I think in terms of just the day-to-day -day task, you're going to find the overall UI being glitchy and, you know, different performance things like that. But I think if your, you know, use case is pretty light, if you don't do anything super crazy, then I think you'll be okay for the most part. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up there. Now, Pretty much summing up this whole entire video and to answer the question, is the Samsung Galaxy A50 still worth it in 2021? Well, this is pretty much what I'll tell you. I think the Samsung Galaxy A50 is still a pretty decent phone. I think it actually still has some characteristics going for it that are strong, but I don't necessarily think it is the best phone for the price tag. And what I mean by that is, I think the Galaxy A50 kind of, you know, messes up in some areas that may be crucial for a lot of people. First off, the display I think is actually pretty good and visually it looks like a pretty good phone. You obviously have, you know, that triple camera setup on their back, which looks good, but it isn't actually a good camera setup. You know, and that's, like I said, one of the bigger problems. You're getting an ultra wide sensor, which is great, but you're already kind of, you know, getting a lackluster experience because you can't do 4K on the front or the back, but also the overall photos don't even look that great. So if you're somebody who's planning to do a lot of photos on their phones, you're probably going to experience some problems here. On top of that, the software is pretty much already outdated because Android 12 just came out in terms of a developer beta. So you're going to be experiencing some issues there. 
but not everything is bad. You have a micro SD card slot on this phone with a very big battery. And as I mentioned, you have a visually good looking phone. But as I mentioned before, on top before that, getting a phone like the Samsung Galaxy S10, I think will give you a much better experience than this thing. Also getting a phone like a OnePlus 6T or OnePlus 7 will also get you a much better experience than this thing too. And those phones aren't really that much more far off than this device. So as I mentioned before, the choice is yours, but I would probably recommend picking up those phones over this one in my opinion. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers that up. Like I mentioned, if you want to pick up these phones, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed the video, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I'll have every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.